Hi, I'm Kathy, and I want to share today about a web-based tool that's free called thatquiz.org. That's exactly how you get there in your browser of choice. Just go to thatquiz.org. There are lots of things to explore on this main screen, but I would encourage you to go into the upper right corner and create a free teacher account. You go do that while I log in. Once you're logged in, the next move you'll like to do is to create your first class. On the left side, select new class. You'll have an opportunity to name the class as you'd like. And you can either manually type in student information or there is an import if you have a spreadsheet. Once you create your first class and save it, you're going to go back and edit that same class. Now that it's been created, you'll see some new options at the top. Homepage with passwords, that makes a URL for your class that can be shared once and for all for students to access your That Quiz for the rest of the year. I'd encourage you also to give passwords for your students. And if you want students to be able to review their grades with a password protected login, another layer of security, um, you can go ahead and check that box. Now that we have a class, we can begin assigning quizzes to our students. If you'd like that quiz to create a quiz for you on just a skill, um, there's some common tests here that you can choose from. If I pick integers or arithmetic, maybe I want it to be only 10 questions. This level here correlates to different things. You just have to play around a bit. Uh, maybe I want addition and subtraction only. I'm curious about negatives. Maybe I don't like that problem set, so I'll regenerate to try a new one. And then once you're happy with what you've got here, you click assign test and then it goes to all your students in that class. Once you assign a quiz to a class, you can click on the test name and there are some more options here for you. I assign it for just this minute, but maybe I want to sign it tomorrow instead. Or maybe I want to assign it a specific time. Maybe I want them to have it on Wednesday at 8.30 a.m. and not a minute before. You can also make that quiz save students progress as they work or not. You can have students get detailed feedback at the end or maybe you only just want them to see the grade. Maybe you want them to have one shot at it, leaving always save grades selected, or maybe you want kids to have a chance to redo if they earn less than 80%. I like to leave it so students can navigate forwards and backwards, and I don't like to show them how many they have right and wrong as they're working. Let's save some feedback till the end. Once you're happy with those constraints, hit save, and now that quiz that was already assigned in your account will show up in student accounts when you told it to, with the limits that you put. So these common tests are things that are auto-generated by that quiz. Some of it is very skill-based, but feel free to click around in there. You might see some things um, that are of value to you. There are things where kids can practice using a ruler. Um, there's lots of algebra in here. Maybe you want kids to find slopes or do some graphing. Again, experimentation here and assigning things and taking a look at what they look like. Anytime you want to see a practice of it, there's a URL for practice in the upper right corner. Just click on it and you can see what students will see and you can practice the test just like they would. Of note, there are lots of teachers over the years who have been using that quiz and they've designed and shared all sorts of things. If you go under browse, you can search and find things that other teachers have created. If you like it, you can import it or assign it yourself. Again, since these are community created, I would encourage you to look them over carefully, make sure they are assessing what you want to assess, check for typos or different vocabulary usage, and once you import and edit it, you might want to assign it after you put your stamp on it. So there are lots of user-friendly ways to generate or borrow quizzes that other people have made. My favorite area of that quiz is this other tests design area. This is where you can create from scratch things that you would like. If you look in the upper right corner, there are three different types of questions you can ask. You can create a matching. You can just create your own questions that are short response or multiple choice. And one that's pretty powerful that I like a lot, and I've been using a lot lately, is slides. So in the slides area, there are all sorts of things you can do. One thing you can do is drag this strange looking icon here and you can see multiple choice will show up. If you wanted to type a question to go with it, select the text tool, click where you want the question, and then you can type a question in. One thing you have to know on this left side, these tools, if you wanna do a different function, you're really gonna have to do a lot of clicking. For example, I'm gonna throw all this away, so I had to select the little hand, drag that choice, 
and sample question and just drag them all off the slide to make them go away. Maybe you would like uh, just a completion question. So you can drag this answer and put some text here, ask a question, and then maybe the answer is 20. And what's nice is you can drag the question where you want the answer to be anywhere you'd like on the slide. Those are just a couple of things you can use. Let me show you something I made that was kind of unique. And I really couldn't think of another platform to make something like this other than that quiz. I'm using this as a warm up in a couple of days. So we've been studying angle relationships and I imported this diagram as an image. That's another cool thing. If you have an image for a problem from another place, you just click image and upload it. And then you can adjust how big or small it is using this little resize tool. Again, it's a lot of clicking the finger, clicking the resize, uh, clicking the text. Uh, you have to get used to kind of the clunky click around, but it does work for you. So I dragged and dropped a whole bunch of these empty boxes into all of these angles. Um, and then students are going to find all the missing angles. Now, when the kids see this, it's completely blank. I'll show you what it looks like for them. So here's a little preview of what the kids see. So all of these empty angle measures are things that the kids can fill in. So we've got a 30 degree angle here because it's vertical. This one will be 150 because these two are supplementary and so on and so forth. And once kids are done, they would click okay. Now, because I didn't complete the task, boo, I only got 13%. What's nice is kiddos can see which ones they missed. Their answer would be in parentheses, the incorrect answer. And then that quiz also gives the opportunity to click here to go and correct your mistakes so kids can look back. So now I'm gonna dig into one of my actual classes and show you some of the things from the teacher side that you can see over time with all of the that quizzes that you assign and that students will take. So I'm here in one of my algebra classes for this year. And right now I'm under C tests, so you can see lots of things that I have assigned or I have scheduled to be assigned at a future date. If I want to see student grades, I click grades. Now I've scooted over my class list so you can't see any of my students' names, and you can select from this dropdown what range of dates you'd like to see assessment scores for, or you can click other and customize it for your own view. But I'm just showing you here briefly the past three months, things that kids have taken. If you want to drill down and see details about which questions kids missed a lot and who missed them and the choices that they made, what incorrect answers, you can click on any of these quiz titles. I'm not gonna do that now because I don't want you to see my student information. And if you want to look specifically at any one of these scores, if you click on it, you're gonna see that student's score and the things that they missed. Um, this is great for intervening. One thing I love is having them redo it if they'd like. Um, you could even set the threshold at 100. It doesn't have to be graded. Um, these are great for feedback and metacognition. If a student is asked to take a quiz on slope and they put all of their slopes upside down and they get that feedback right away, they wanna take action and seek help pronto. This is great to use before something is graded, or it's great for little learning checks along the way. A lot of people are looking for things that self-grade, that self-check, um, and things that put this in a nice, neat, almost gradebook style for the teacher to see. And what's nice is students, when they log in, they can see a tab that says completed tests, and they can dig in and see some things from the assessments that they have taken in the past too. So it's hard to do this tool justice because there are just so many layers and options of things that a teacher can do for their students, um, I'm gonna encourage you to start your free account to create your first class. And maybe your first class is just a, a mock class where you are a student. So you can see assigning it from the teacher side, how does that feel, what does that look like, and then log in as yourself as a student um, from your class link and kind of see that experience from the student side. Um, once you get comfortable with the tool, maybe you can even start creating some of your own things. I know self-checking and self-grading tools right now um, are invaluable, and I would encourage you to consider that quiz as an option. Thanks for watching.